Hi there, it's Martha, and if you are new here, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. If you are new here, um, maybe about once a month I do a video that's not necessarily wax related. It's just a video of kind of what I'm loving lately or just favorites, you know, everyday favorites in a way, things that um, I like to share. I love hearing about favorites, like I've learned and picked up some favorites of my own just from hearing about other people's favorites. And back in maybe March or February, um, I thought I would give it a try and share with you. And it, I did get a really great responses in the comments that you liked that video and would love to hear more, have this series continue. So here I am with uh, May's installment of my favorites and also, it's an opportunity for you to share yours. I really, really do enjoy hearing what are some of your favorites, and, and I'm going to share with you some of mine. In addition to that, I'm also adding on my European vacation. I'm going to talk about my vacation and be chatty about it in this video. So it's going to be like two videos in one. Um, I most recently was in Europe, and uh, many of you over on Instagram that follow me there, I was posting photos and some videos of where I was. And I had gotten some requests and some DMs if I was, you know, or asking me if I was going to share it on YouTube. And I was like, I wasn't planning on it. But uh, since you asked, I will. So um, I will timestamp all of this. So if you just want to know about my European vacation, you can skip over to that. And if you don't, you can watch my favorites video. And if you don't want to hear any of it, you can just wait for my next <laughs> wax video or upload uh, that I do that is more your speed. So um, this is just like, again, once a month, I like to share some of my favorites. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to share, because I'm thinking travel, vacation, I'm going to be talking about my vacation. I figured I would highlight a few things that don't get talked about a lot on, um, you know, a lot of the wax channels or Scentsy channels. Um, and so this is a favorite of mine. And I probably did mention this before, but I'm doing this. I think I did in my very first one. But just a quick shout out for the Scentsy Go. Uh, this is a great thing for when you're traveling and, and want to bring your scents with you, but you don't want to bring a warmer with you. Um, so that is a, just a great, uh, I think, thing to do. You get some of the scents. They come in these pods. And uh, this one in particular, this one is Bonfire Beach, uh, which is a great, great scent. And I love it very much. I also have the little travel, the little, little one. I'll have a picture of that here. Um, and I actually use that in my car and I put, pop these in there. Uh, so I get the scent in my car and it's wonderful. Some people put this in their car um, and that's great too. So just a little plug as I'm thinking about traveling. Um, the other one that I will put up here right now is the small, what is that one called? Now I should have looked that up. I'll put it here in the comment, oh, in the, in the uh, screen here, the name of it, but it's like the, it's just the simple new little element warmer that is offered. It's like the entry starter uh, warmer that Sensi offers. And it is a great one. I've heard, I have the milk diamond one, the milk, uh, milk, glass, milk diamond glass, milk diamond glass warmer, which is very similar. Um, and I was given one of the new ones that I'm putting a picture of here. I actually ended up giving it to a friend because I just have a lot of warmers, but I've heard from many, many people that that is actually a really great little warmer. Uh, it does great. And I think it's just a perfect size. It's, you know, the box of it was not, it's, I know. I don't know if you could tell what it is. Not very big because um, I did have it um, in my hands for uh, a little while. And uh, and I think that would be also a great alternative if you do want to bring waxes with you and warmer, something like that, um, I think would be really wonderful and a great starter gift as well. So that's the Scentsy stuff, I think. Yeah, that was the Scentsy stuff that I wanted to mention really quick. Okay, so then... Um, as I was thinking of things that I really love and I was, you know, I've been kind of keeping a list of things that I would want to share. And one of them is this Yeti mug, this Yeti travel mug. I purchased this, I think in 2020, uh, you know, we started work, at least I started working from home, uh, because of COVID we weren't going in the office very much until much later. Um, and so I would find that as I'm on, you know, videos and zooms and, and video meetings, 
I would have my coffee with me in my mug. And then by the time the meeting was over, my coffee would be cold. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? I, I have a Yeti water bottle, which I really love. Um, and I wanted, I'd seen these around and I wanted, um, to try it. So these come in all kinds of colors. This happens to be my favorite. Um, but this is a fantastic one. I don't travel with this necessarily because it is very wide. Uh, as you can see here, just to compare like the Sensi Go. Uh, you know, it's much wider and it doesn't fit in my cup holders, but I didn't buy it to be driving around with my coffee. Um, I can get it to kind of like lean in this way and it'll, it'll stay in my coffee, uh, cup holder or my, or my cup holder in my car, but it doesn't fit in there nicely. But the reason I got this is not necessarily for traveling, but for when I'm at home meeting after meeting after meeting, I didn't want my coffee to get cold. Um, and this works fantastic. I can be in an hour meeting or a 90 minute meeting and my coffee is still very hot for a long, long time. And then, you know, still very warm, uh, by the end of those meetings. So love this Yeti mug. If you are thinking of gifts, I know Father's Day is coming up next month. Um, you know, or you have a man in your life or a woman. I mean, obviously it's it's a unisex type of gift um, and it comes in different colors. And I think this would be uh, a great gift too, if, uh, if not for yourself, for someone else. So that is the Yeti travel mug. And then kind of adjacent things that were there. I love records, like vinyl records. I have a I have a record player. I held on to all my records from the 80s when I was growing up. I still had them all. And was it two Christmases ago? I got a record player again. I had one and then didn't and then got a new one. And um, so I just like records. And then I've been starting to buy um, current records on vinyl. Um, you know, my daughter and I go to or participated in record store day, I think back in April. Um, and so it's just fun, something fun that we both enjoy. She's enjoying vinyls as well. So these are coasters um, and they're they're just coasters for uh, and they look like little teeny records, like little vinyl records. So I'm just thinking for another potential gift or an add on to someone who loves records or loves music. This might be kind of a fun little gift potentially. And yeah, so these are just records. I got this. I think as like a stocking stuffer or something for Christmas, but use these every day. They're on my coffee table and they're just fun. And again, kind of a nice gift for someone that, you know, loves music or vinyls, vinyl records and stuff like that. So I thought I'd throw that in there since I was kind of picking up things, um, shopping around <laughs> at my, in my home, looking for what I wanted to talk about. Okay. So back to traveling. Um, <clears throat> There is a, uh, let's see, this is a pill organizer. Yeah, this doesn't sound sexy, right? Uh, pill organizer, but I think it's great. I take vitamins and I, I don't take like a, like a one vitamin a day. It's like ones that I take different little vitamins. I use hum nutrition, hum, hum nutrition, I think it's called. Uh, so they come in separate bottles for different things. Uh, you can take some before, you know, before you eat or some with meals. So, I like to have something like this because I can never remember. I'm like, did I take that other one? Did I take my fish oil pill or whatever? Um, so I did buy this and it's great for traveling. It comes with this little travel case. Uh, it zips up. But why I like this one instead of like that, you know, you've probably seen that rectangular looking box uh, one is you can take one of these individually and drop it in your purse or in your bag and they don't take a lot of room um they they have the days of the week on there so hopefully they won't spill over um but they have you know sunday through saturday and they have um it's broken up into two compartments the morning compartment and afternoon compartment so i just love this i use it that's how i remember to take my pills. I'll fill them up at the beginning of the week and then um, just have them ready to go on my kitchen counter. And then I just make sure that, you know, the ones I want to take with lunch while I'm at work, I can take, um, take with me and pop them in there. So this is just kind of a slightly different take on a pill, pill organizer, but uh, you know, might come in handy. And I'm going to have to turn on the fan because it's very warm in here. 
Okay. I had to go turn on my air conditioning because it's either I, you start to see me sweat, which would not be attractive, but then you're going to have the sound or the hum of the air conditioning. So hopefully it's not too bad on the sound. All right. So where was I? Okay. So then, um, going on to traveling, um, this is another one that it's been a favorite of mine for years. I discovered this back in, oh gosh, I think it was like 2007. Uh, so this is Downy Wrinkle Release. This I discovered in 2007. I was going to go to Europe for the first time on a European vacation. And it was going to be two weeks and we didn't want to take a lot of bags. And we knew we'd have to probably repeat some clothes and things get wrinkled. And I'm not really big on ironing in hotels and looking for an iron or asking for an iron. And so, um, I just bought this to try it out and it was a game changer. This was so great. A lot of times, you know, clothes will get wrinkled in, in your um, luggage and you pull it out and sometimes just hanging it, you know, while you shower and hoping the steam takes it out, doesn't really work well. So this actually works fantastic. I love this. This works so well that I've continued to always have wrinkle release on me for all the time. Um, and not only does it take out the wrinkles for, I'd say a majority of at least the clothes that I wear, that is mostly like a cotton blend of some type or even rayon and things like that, that are kind of soft and knit. Um, it takes this stuff right out. It takes the wrinkles right out and it scents your clothes to like a downy scent, you know, like a, a clean laundry, just laundered scent, which is great. Also when you're traveling, when you might have to like put on the same shirt, you know, or, or reuse a top or something like that, because there's just not easy to do your laundry while you're traveling. Uh, so this has been fantastic and a game changer. And I always take a little bottle of it when I'm traveling. Also fantastic. If you have young, maybe teenagers who maybe just leave clean clothes on the floor or in a clean hamper like my younger one did. She had a dirty hamper and the clothes that she had washed and just was too lazy to put away. And so she would come out of her room looking like a big wrinkled mess. And I'm like, you look like you slept in that. So she also learned the power of the wrinkle release. So she doesn't have, she's not going to iron her t-shirts and things like that, but spray this on there, look like brand new. Um, and so, yeah, so this is definitely a favorite of mine. Let me know if you've tried it or if you have some other, I don't know, cheaper alternative, but um, that has been a, a great thing to have and also great to refresh and close when you're traveling. All right, then this might be kind of like a, a no brainer, but if you are traveling, um, I discovered this from watching someone that does travel videos talk about it. So I bought it. So again, someone sharing their favorites or things that are useful and came so came in so handy when I was traveling in Europe. Uh, this is a, a, what is it called? A travel adapter, you know, like a plug adapter. And it's just this rectangular looking cube. Um, and what's awesome about this is it works for a lot of places. So, um, I went to, I was in Spain, Croatia, Switzerland, France, and the Netherlands. All of them use this particular plug. Let's see, see it, it pops out. So it's this kind of two pronged plug. Um, so everything needs to be plugged in there. So what I love about this particular one is, oh, I didn't bring it, did I? A regular US adapter fits in here. You just plug it in. There's actually plugs in these holes. It might not look it like it does, but it actually does. And then this is your adapter in the wall. Uh, so, but then when you're not using it, it just slides right in. And if you're in the UK, right? UK, yeah, UK, then push this one out. And then you get this adapter, which is for, uh, you know, if you're traveling in the UK. And if you're in Australia or the United States, it's this adapter, which we're used to. Um, and so it's just awesome because it works, you know, most places uh, in the world. And it also has a lot of these USB and USC um, plugs for your iPad, your, your um, phone, headphones, whatever that, you know, watch Apple watch that you need to um, charge. You can just use these or you can plug something in. So this came really handy, bought several of these, so, you know, so I had one, 
My husband had one, the kids had one. So that came in really handy and it's from a company called uh, to San, and I will link all of these in the in the um, description below. Okay, again, luggage cubes. This is nothing new. You've probably all heard of them. Maybe you, I'm sure you have them maybe, but again, another life changer. If you don't have cubes, I think they're worth the money. Uh, I have several of these and they just help me stay organized. They compact everything, your clothes and stuff. And um, they come in different sizes. Like this is a smaller one than this one. Um, and they're fantastic. Uh, and they, this one's, you know, it's, it's, you can kind of put it in your luggage, I guess, if you wanted to, or hang it uh, in the closet or something like that. But these work great. I like to put like my shirts in one of them. I have a thinner one for like my, you know, undergarments. I have a, I had a larger one where my daughter had packed all her hoodies and sweaters and, and jackets. And it's just easy to find things instead of pulling everything out of your luggage or everything's in there. Uh, it organizes things. So if you don't have travel cubes and you're planning on traveling this summer, I highly recommend them. I think they're great. Um, and they, you fit more in your luggage than you would if you didn't. Uh, so those are the, that's that almost done here with my travel favorites. But then, um, if you, uh, well, there's probably other countries. It's not just Barcelona, but I, I was in Barcelona and they will tell you as well. Uh, those that live in Barcelona that it is like, Maybe it's not the pickpocket capital of the world, but a lot of pickpockets in, in Barcelona um, don't ever, ever wear your phone in your back pocket if you're in Barcelona. I'm not sure if that's all of Spain as well, but definitely Barcelona. Um, so I had this small purse that I wore. I, this was my purse for two and a half weeks. Um, and I love this one. This, you know, I can put my, I had like my euros in a pocket. I had some credit card and some other things here. I, you know, it's got, it's got three zippers, so you can definitely put different things in here. I had like my passports and my phone. Uh, there's another pocket inside for like lip gloss and stuff. So really liked this purse. It comes also in multiple, multiple, um, colors and it's on Amazon. I just, you know, I wasn't looking for anything expensive or design or anything like that. I just wanted a purse that was really not taking a lot of space. It's fairly thin um, and, and just fantastic. So, and, you know, it was great to have things in there. Uh, you know, I had like tickets for museums and things like that, that I can fold up and put in there. My daughter lived in Barcelona for the first half of the year. She had a similar bag to this. She had a black bag. Um, and that was similar to this also a crossbody bag. And I just think that, you know, if you don't have a small little purse, you probably should. If you go to, if you go to concerts and, and travel or things like that, sometimes it's just nice to have something that you can put across your body. You don't have to hold it. It's not slipping off your arms. Um, and you know, like for concerts, I know they don't let you bring in big bags, uh, little stuff like this to, um, you know, carry your things around. So just a plug for small purses and bags. And then let's see, I think this is my last, yes, my last thing that I'm going to share. This particular bag is from a designer, I think, or company called MZ Wallace. Um, I believe they're, I believe it's like female owned if I, if my, if I remember correctly, but this doesn't look like a, <laughs> look like a bag, right? It's got really nice zippers. And what I love about these zippers is they won't, they're not like sharp. They're not cheap zippers. These are like industrial zippers. Um, and so you don't like worry about snagging your nails on them or anything. Great, great zipper. Um, but that's not the bag. This is like the bag for the bag. The bag is this. So maybe I should, this is the bag. It's like made of like the same material as like a North face jacket or like a Patagonia. Um, and it, like you saw it, it folded into this little thing here. Um, and so I love this as my carry on I actually use this. This is a great overnight bag. Um, it's great for a carry on it's light. It doesn't weigh anything. So whatever you're putting in there is what's adding the weight to it. Um, and then inside, uh, has two smaller little bags 
And so I could put like, I don't know, lipstick. I, again, keeping things organized, maybe smaller things in here, maybe my passport's in here uh, when I'm traveling. I like this particular size for all the electronics, like all the plugs that you want to make sure you have on the plane. Um, we're like in here, headphones, stuff like that. So this is a fantastic bag. Very well done. It's not cheap, um, but I love this bag. And I bought this after traveling uh, to Switzerland with a friend who had a black one. Uh, and she was raving how much she loved this bag. And uh, and I got one immediately because, yeah, she she sold me on it. So there's a pocket inside. Um, there's the pocket inside here. Let's see. And then there's two other pockets on the other side. But again, just really fantastic bag. Love it. My favorite. I picked it up in this striped one. It doesn't come in this color anymore. This was a couple years ago, but they do have other colors, but I think their most popular one is obviously black. Um, but again, this is a purchase that for me was worth it when I got it still is. I take this everywhere. Um, great. Like even a weekend bag. Uh, it's light. It's compact. When I put it away, I just kind of fold it back up and it fits in that smaller compartment. I stick it in my closet. So that is the last of the travel stuff. Now let's talk about my European vacation. Hey, it's me. A uh, different day, different hair, different outfit. Uh, I've actually tried to record this Europe, Europe vacation video a few times and one was way too long and rambly. The first one. Second one, it just, my battery died in the middle of it. And I'm like, I'm ready to give up, <laughs> but you had asked for this and I am happy to oblige. So let me give you a, hopefully a shorter version. And hopefully I won't be rambling too long about my trip. Um, for those of you that don't know, I just came back from Europe about two, well, it's almost been about two weeks. And uh, we were there because my youngest, who is a sophomore in college, was studying abroad and she was studying in Barcelona. And we're in California. So to go to Europe, it's it's a it's a long trek. It's not like we're in New Jersey or New York where, you know, it could be four or five hours to hop over to Europe. It's a long trek. I mean, it from San Francisco to I think our, uh, we made a connection in Munich was 11 hours or yeah, it was about 11 hours or a little bit more. And then from Munich to Barcelona, um, you know, so it, it's a long trip, but anyhow, we got to Barcelona and we were so excited. Um, we hadn't seen my daughter in four months. She, you know, we dropped her off in January in Barcelona and, uh, and then this time it was the whole family, you know, her, her sister, my oldest daughter was able to take time off. So really a family trip. And when the, as the kids get older, we know it's going to be harder and harder uh, to do these kind of family trips. And uh, yeah, so who knows? I mean, I hope there'll be many more, but um, you know, who knows um, as, as the kids, you know, get out of college or start to work, um, it may be harder. So went to Barcelona and I love Barcelona. It's just beautiful, felt right at home. Um, I mean, I do speak Spanish. Uh, it's not, it's, but it's almost the same. It's very similar. You understand, but you don't need to. And, and in all of these countries that we went to, um, you know, you can, many people, especially in the travel industry and in the hotels and things like that speak English. So, you know, I wouldn't be too worried about it if you don't, but just something that I like to do because I do love languages, um, is I do try to learn a little bit of where I'm going. Um, so I did learn some Dutch before this trip because I don't, because I don't speak <laughs> Dutch and I knew, I knew I wasn't going to need it necessarily. But again, I try to learn how to say hello, how to say good morning, how to say thank you, how to say some basic things, because I just think it's nice to try and make an effort, especially when you're visiting, you know, a foreign country, you don't want to act like you're an entitled American and you really want to be very respectful and, um, appreciate, you know, the country and the language and all of that. So that's a total sidebar, but anyway, in Barcelona, um, amazing city felt right at home. And, um, we went, um, 
I'm kind of talking both my trips in January and in, and in May, I'm going to combine where we went, um, just to share some of that since I have some photos, I went to, um, Casa Baccio, I think is the name, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, we went to another place called Park Guell. And we went to see the La Familia Sagrada or Fam Sagrada Familia, Sagrada Familia. So those are all places that um, the, is he, I guess, is he known as an artist or an engineer? But um, I think artist and Anthony, I believe it's Anthony Gaudi. We'll just say Gaudi, uh, very famous, famous um, artist uh, from, I believe, from Barcelona. And he he is the one who designed uh, those a lot of things in those places. So like in Parkwell, there's a lot of his art, like, I mean, there's like a building there very whimsical looking. It almost looks like something you'd see out of like, uh, like a gingerbread house or like a Hansel and Gretel or just it's, everything is very whimsical, very playful, very colorful. So I really, really fell in love. I'm a fan now of Gaudi's art, artwork. And then Casa, Casa Batio is a, a home that he built for this family. Um, and it's, again, it's the, the detail, like I don't know what it would be like to be in his brain, but just the little details on how air would flow, um, details that like the inside of the, like the middle part of the house looks almost like a pool, like an ombre where it goes from dark blue to light blue as you get to the top. Um, the patio outside, very, again, very whimsical and childlike in some ways and just really, really cool. So those were some places that we visited. Um, and then Sagrada Familia is the church, famous, famous church in Barcelona. Also famous because it's never been finished. Like they've been there. It's still not finished. They're still working on it. Uh, and I think it's kind of a bit of a joke that it's a place that will never be finished. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty finished, right? Um, but you still see cranes and they're still building. I mean, they're still working on on uh, one of the towers. And again, highly recommend that if you are there, you do take a tour because the tour will really give you the story and you'll notice or they'll call out details that you wouldn't really know and understand or why he like why he designed things the way that he did or why there seems to be woodland animals and critters like of the like door and the archways of this church, you know, just little things like that. Uh, why one side has yellow and not yellow, blue and green stained glass windows while the other side has red. I mean, just the detail and the ceilings of this place. Um, I mean, it's, it's amazing inside. So the outside is like something like you've never seen, and then the inside is also just as amazing. Uh, the doors with all the letters on there and you see the word Jesus and just, it's, it's just amazing whether you're, you know, whatever um, religious denomination you are. Um, I think just the beauty of it and the intricacies and details of it is pretty, pretty cool. So uh, definitely did that. We also did a tram, uh, like a, a sky tram that took us from this park, very uh, park, which is near like Olympic park. And it's, it's a, it's a big park. That's got a lot of things um, there. And then uh, you take it all the way down to the water. So Barcelona is on the water. There's beach there. It's not, it's like a city beach in a way, but, um, but you know, they have the ports there and yachts and boats and things like that. So we spent a lot of time both in January and then the three days that we were there in May, really getting a good idea of the city. And uh, we went to down the famous street known as La Rambla. So La Rambla is just a, a famous street there. Lots of shops, shopping, uh, restaurants, you name it. Just a famous street. Excuse me. I don't know why I just ate. So I'm still uh, processing or digesting, I guess. Uh, and then uh, in on La Rambla is the famous market. So they have an outdoor market, 
which is incredible. So those are definitely places you should hit if you're ever in Barcelona, because they're just kind of these tourist places for sure, but for a reason. Uh, and the outdoor market has, it's, it's got everything, fruits, vegetables, candies. They have places to eat. Uh, they have snacks, you know, that you can food that you can take with you, uh, nuts, spices, uh, meats, uh, that you can purchase. Um, so pretty cool to go. You can even have dinner there if you wanted, um, or lunch. And, uh, and I would also recommend not going on a Saturday or Sunday if you can help it. Cause it's very, very crowded, but loved Barcelona. Um, always have a special place in my heart just because it treated my daughter so well. And, uh, and it'll always be a very, very special place for her. She said she, it was, she loved it. It's gonna, it was, it is, it has been hard for her to leave, um, Barcelona. And, uh, and so that was Barcelona. Then we went to Croatia. So we had to fly to Croatia and we went to Dubrovnik and part of it was because in 2021, we were supposed to go to Croatia through her school. It was her senior high school trip. And, you know, since sophomore year, we were kind of paying into this uh, company that was going to to give, you know, the seniors, the high school seniors, this trip to Dubrovnik. And because of COVID, it didn't end up happening. And so we, uh, you know, we, we got the refund and put that money aside for the one day that we would go to Croatia. And so here we are, we're in Spain. We gotta, we gotta do it now. We, that's what we saved for. And so we did go to Dubrovnik and we are also huge Game of Thrones fans. So if you are a Game of Thrones fan, you may know that Dubrovnik is King's Landing. Uh, it is, it is King's Landing. So the historical town of Dubrovnik is where they filmed a lot of scenes, uh, especially in season two, a lot of the scenes, but, uh, you know, um, they filmed like actually the first episode of season two is exactly where we were that day when we did the game of Thrones tour. It was like the red keep. Um, they also filmed the walk of shame, like in a later season when Cersei's walking, uh, if you, if you know, you know, the, the walk of shame, um, and so that was really cool to do the Game of Thrones tour. We also got a tour of the city, even from up above. And it's a beautiful city. It's right on the water, right on the Asian Asian Sea. Um, and it's like this blue and green water, crystal clear, and you know, right there in the in the shallow areas. And we stayed at a very nice resort there, right on the water. So that was a really really nice time in Dubrovnik. Um, great people. Uh, our cab driver that picked us up from the airport, we gave him a call and we're like, Hey, can you take us back? Uh, a few days later, he had given us his card to give him a call and he did wine tours and things like that too. So, uh, just really had a great experience with everyone we came across with, whether it was our cab drivers or, um, our tour guide and just really enjoyed Dubrovnik. Um, so glad we went and finally, finally got Croatia, at least part of Croatia, one city in Croatia crossed off our list. So from Croatia, we went to um, Lucerne, Lucerne in Switzerland. Uh, everyone in the family got to pick a place they wanted to go. Um, and so my oldest wanted to go to Switzerland. I've, I've been to Switzerland a few times and have been to Lucerne and we thought, okay, that's going to be a, that, that'll be a nice place. I think she'll like it. Um, it's beautiful, very scenic. I mean, I think oh, Switzerland in general and these, these towns, um, that have lakes and there's lots of lakes. Um, I've been to a couple of them are, are just beautiful and scenic because you have the mountains and you have the water and, um, she loved it. She like came alive in Switzerland. We had great food Gr again, great. Everywhere we went, we did not run into at least anyone in the kind of food or service industry, not a single rude person at all. We chatted with our waiter, Ben, we saw his doggy photos and pictures of his daughter. And I mean, it was just a lovely, lovely time. Um, we ate right on the water. There's an old historic bridge right there. So I have lots of pictures from Switzerland. Um, we went shopping, bought chocolates, did all that stuff. But I think the highlight for us was going to Mount Pilatus. So if you go up to Mount Pilatus, you can take a gondola 
all the way up. You can go halfway or you can pay for the all the way up to the very, very, very top, which I think was like, if I remember correctly, was if not 7,000 feet, close to 7,000 feet high above sea level. And um, there was snow at the at the top there and the just majestic views, absolutely majestic views of uh, Lake Lucerne in the surrounding area. And on our way down, there's a little part of it where you can go toboggan. Toboggan, I think is what it's called. So it's like a sled. So if you pull, you know, push forward, you can go fast. If you pull back, it's the brakes. So we did do that. And my youngest is fearless. She, she wants to do everything. And so she did it twice. And the second time she didn't put the brakes at all. She wants, she purposely wanted to go full throttle uh, and she fell off, but Luckily, she didn't go rolling down the mountain um, and she was fine. But she just she just that's her. She's the fearless kid who's already been in ATV accidents and things like that, where I'm like, oh, my God, you're going to you're going to kill me. But um, yeah, she she had a great time. Um, so that was Switzerland. And now we're going to move on to Paris. So from Lucerne. We connected to, we went to Basel and made a connection from Basel to take the train to, to Paris. So the rest of the trip is all via, via train. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's a great way to travel in kind of the Western Europe area. Cause you could, it's just so easy. <laughs> it go to the train station and get on the train. Um, and so we went to Paris and Paris is a great city. I've, I've been to Paris before. Um, although, and, and although I, I, I love Paris, it's, it's a great city. It was probably the lowest, um, ranking for the family just because one, I don't think we did it enough justice. It was, we had three days, we were there for three days and so we didn't get to do much. Um, but we did go see the Eiffel Tower, of course. Um, and we did take a, um, a cruise on the river and in the evening on the river Seine. And then we also went to the Louvre um, and we saw the Mona Lisa and we saw a lot of um, famous art and, and the architecture, mostly the like Greek and Greek statues and, and some of the more famous uh, artwork in the Louvre. You can spend days in the Louvre, to be honest. So we got the really condensed version with a, uh, with a guide. Again, highly recommend when you can, uh, especially if you're doing things, I would recommend doing the tours only because you get to learn a lot more than if you were just kind of looking around on your own. And I think you just get more out of it. So we did also see the Louvre and then right before the Louvre, um, you had asked like, where did you eat? Where did you stay? Uh, so we went to a place, a restaurant called Angelina's and we went there for brunch and we waited in line, uh, about an hour, I think to get in. It's supposedly got yeah, the best chocolate, like hot chocolate or yeah, hot chocolate. I don't know, all over France, or I don't know where, but the best hot chocolate. And it was very good. I will say it was very, very good. Also, their um, pastries and desserts are just beautiful. Uh, so very famous place to have, I think, brunch or lunch. And um, we went there. Uh, the, the other thing with Paris, we didn't plan out where we should eat. So I I'm in a way disappointed in ourselves that we didn't have these fabulous meals in Paris this time around. I have had family, fabulous meals before in Paris, but part of it was by the time dinner rolled around, some, some of us were hungry, some of us weren't, some of us didn't want this, some of us didn't want that. Um, and so we ended up just kind of picking a place and it really wasn't like the best places. Um, but I've had in the past great Mediterranean food, like in the Latin quarter and things like that. So this time Paris was like just kind of quick and we added on, uh, Disneyland Paris. So my family is a Disney family. Um, and my oldest, I think would love to hit every Disneyland park in the world. Uh, and of course, since we were going to be in Paris, she's like, can we, can we, both of them really wanted to go to Disneyland Paris. So we did. So that was one full day was taken up there. Uh, it's about 35 minutes outside of Paris. 
Um, but it was a lot of fun. You know, it was a lo- it was good family time. It was a lot of fun, and we enjoyed we enjoyed Disneyland Paris. Not quite the same, I would say, as Disneyland and Disney World. Obviously, it's not. But I think it just didn't have like the same magic. There was just something about Disneyland uh, and Disney World, and I think it's all the little details, like the the music the bands playing. I mean, it's, there's just constant, lots of things going on. Um, but it was fun, but it was fun. Um, then from Paris, we went to Amsterdam and Amsterdam is where we finished our trip and where we spent probably the most amount of days. We were there from Monday through Friday or Monday through, yeah, we left on Friday. Um, and what was I going to say about Amsterdam? Oh, we took the train. So we took the train from Paris to Amsterdam and highly recommend that. It was three hours and 45 minutes, I think. Uh, and they serve you food on the train, almost like you're on an airplane. They have attendants there that will come down with their, with their, uh, you know, cart and, and feed you and, offer you drinks and snacks and things like that. And it's so scenic to see the, the French countryside and then going into the Netherlands. So highly recommend that. Okay. So Amsterdam, we hit rain there. We hit, it was almost like Paris was a transition where we got sun, we got rain, we got lots of clouds. Uh, and then when we got to Amsterdam, we did get a, a number of days where it was raining, but that was okay. It was actually okay. I loved Amsterdam. We all did. So Amsterdam was like the one or two spot, depending on who you asked of this trip. It's another city like Barcelona. I don't know if I mentioned that because I've re-recorded this now a number of times, but Barcelona, the metro system, you can go anywhere. It's it's fantastic. Uh, If you do have to catch a cab in Barcelona, they have... um, apps called like free now and cabify are the companies they use. They don't really have Uber in Barcelona. The app shows up like they have Uber, but you'll be waiting forever and ever. If you're actually going to wait for an Uber, I don't think they have Uber. I don't know why the app is there, but, uh, so that was, that was Barcelona, but really you, you can get on pretty much anywhere using the Metro, um, in Paris, same thing, great Metro system in Paris, We did use the cabs as well. And to go from our hotel to the train station when you have five large pieces of luggage and carry on and four people, we knew we were going to need like a van. So they have um, their version of Uber is called G7. So G7 is the app that we downloaded while we were in Paris. So in case you're traveling, you might want to know that. Uh, in Amsterdam, we did not use a cab. We didn't, oh, only to get from the train station to the hotel. We, but we could have taken the public transportation system there, the metro. But again, we just had so much luggage that we didn't want to be, you know, getting on the metro with all the luggage. But we we could have. Um, but we that was the only time we took the cab. Um kind of to get us from the train station to the hotel and then later on the hotel to the airport. Everything else is the the public transportation system, the metro. You can go anywhere, everywhere. Uh, So we just got a ticket for the full week and that works for all the buses, trams, subway, all of that. Um, So Amsterdam, easy to get around and loved it, loved it. Uh, What to know? It's the canals in Amsterdam. I mean, there it's a city that is just got canals going, you know, throughout it. Lots of little bridges, bicycles everywhere. Everyone's everyone's got a bike. So you got to almost watch out more for the bikes than you do the cars. But definitely when you're crossing the street, you're looking for cars and you're looking for the bikes and then making sure, you know, pedestrians. Um, but easy to get around. We did a private canal ride. So, um, we had our own little boat and he was just taking us places and showing us this and that. And, and so that was fun. We went to the, the, uh, I forget the, what it's, if I can, if I can find the name, I'll put it down here, but outside of Amsterdam, about 30 minutes outside is the Tulip Gardens. Uh, we were there in, um, mid-May, which is really the end of tulip season, but, 
I was like, we can't go to the Netherlands and not see the tulips, at least not for me. I love tulips. They're one of my favorite flowers. And um, I mean, I've seen the pictures of the tulip fields and the windmill. And so I wanted to go to the gardens and everyone loved it. Actually, even the kids, they really enjoyed um, walking around and taking pictures and posing and all of that. And just as beautiful as I had hoped it would be really, really beautiful. Cause, um, you know, tulips come in all shape, not all shape. Well, they come in all shapes. They're big ones and there's little ones and all colors. And it's just gorgeous. It rained all day when we were there in the gardens, but that added kind of to the element of, of the colorful umbrellas and the little raindrops on on the flowers, but it was a fantastic day going to see the gardens. Um, and then what else? We ate at a restaurant called, ne I think it's like Nia and N E A, if I remember correctly, uh, supposedly like one of the top four best pizza places in all of Europe. Uh, and so when we ate there, they give you like, you know, you order your own pizza and then they give you scissors and we're like, what, what's the scissors for? Well, they don't slice up the pizza there. Uh, I, I noticed that in a lot of Europe, they don't really do a, they don't slice it the way they do here in the States. Um, but yeah, the scissors are for you to cut the slice, however, however size you want it. So that was fun. And it was great pizza. And we met this cute couple from Spain that was just talky, talky, talky as on their way out. We had met them on their way in because they, they were waiting for a table. Uh, and then on their way out, they stopped and chatted, chatted with us because they said they loved our accents and we're like, our accents. Um, and they, you know, they visit the United States had been here to California and, and, uh, they like talking to Americans cause we like to small talk and we're chatty. Um, the Dutch, uh, are very direct. Um, and she, I don't know if it was in, it might've been in another country, but there are some countries in Europe, you know, it's just different cultures, uh, where, you know, they're just not into small talk. I think, was it Sweden? was someone had told me, but anyway, she had worked in England. She said, uh, for a little while, this was a Spaniard we met and she said, you know, lovely people, super, super nice. Say hello and goodbye. <laughs> Don't know much more about them. Um, you know, they just, there's not a lot of small talk that goes on. So she was getting a kick out of talking to us on their way out. We've probably talked for about 15 minutes and she learned all about, you know, where my daughter had gone to school and all that stuff. But anyway, that was a total sidebar. Sorry to ramble. Um, but yeah, so we had some great food in Amsterdam. My daughter picked out everywhere we were going to eat to make it a lot easier and save us from, you know, being hangry, uh, and then just picking anything, which is what we ended up doing in Paris. <laughs> um, so we ate at really good places. She did research what was getting like four, four stars and above. We had a great Italian restaurant, uh, on the night, uh, before we left. Uh, so great food in Amsterdam. And what I really loved about Amsterdam is it's a complete melting pot. It, it reminds me of New York, not like city, sky, you know, skyscraper New York, but in the sense of like that melting pot, like you can find food from all over the world in just a small area of space. Everyone speaks all kinds of languages, uh, you know, just being on the bus, you know, you're people from Italy heard people talking, you know, Spanish from Spain. Um, even the Dutch were talking English to each other. My daughter made a comment. She's like, why do they even have Dutch if it seems like they all speak English? And I'm like, well, they speak Dutch, of course. Um, but yeah, it's like English was everywhere uh, for the most part. So definitely probably the city where at least, at least Amsterdam itself, you know, you really and anyone I found could, could, would speak English. Um, and did I say we went to the Van Gogh museum? I've already, like I said, been repeating myself over in different, uh, video, video recordings, went to the Van Gogh museum and just, again, loved Amsterdam. I loved all the places we went, but that was for me kind of a favorite of mine, um, since I hadn't been there before and thoroughly enjoyed it. Great, great people everywhere we went just wonderful people. Um, you know, can't say, can't say enough good things. So highly enjoyed our trip. Uh, and if you, 
If you've never traveled, I would say do it. Even if it's not to Europe, I mean, I, I'd say I've always believed, and, and probably because I've been traveling since I was a kid, uh, mostly to Costa Rica, uh, where my family is at or it lives in, um, it, it will open your eyes to a whole different way of living, different cultures, different foods. Um, I think you just can appreciate things more um, when you travel and you see that there isn't only one way to do things. I think it just opens your mind. Like there's different perspectives and different ways of living. And there's so many, so many beautiful places. And it's just for me, I've told my kids this since, since they were little that I want them to travel because I feel like traveling is like, it, you learn more, I think, in traveling than you can in some cases in school. Um, yeah, you could read all the textbooks in the world and stuff like that. But when you're in it and when you're seeing it and when you're living it and when you're trying it, it's just a whole different experience. So even if it's within the United States, uh, go to different states, go to different cities, go to different places. There's so much beauty in this world and so many places to see and people to meet and, um, and even if you don't speak, even if like they don't speak English or whatever, it's so, I've had experiences where you're still, you can still figure it out. They're helping you pointing at things, writing things down. Um, and not in this trip, but you know, I've been to places where, you know, people are maybe not speaking English or you're trying to communicate in some way. And just, I I've been blessed to run into just amazing, amazing, lovely people, lovely people, very proud of where they live, proud of their culture. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think we all should be proud of our differences and, and the different things that, uh, that make us who we are. And so I, I loved my trip. Um, next year, I hope to go to Japan, uh, with my oldest, she was been dreaming of going to Japan for a long time. And so we're going to do, hopefully, you know, God willing, we're going to do a trip to Tokyo and, and some other cities in Japan. So that is my little trip for now. Um, yeah. And so that, I hope you enjoyed this, um, you know, and, and, um, able to share some of my pictures and some of my thoughts. So if there's any questions you have, um, that I just didn't get into or, you know, forgot to share, I'll maybe even leave a pinned comment if I really forgot or left something out. Uh, but otherwise, you know, feel free to leave any comments or things like that. Cause there's just, I could go and so much detail, um, go on and on, but, uh, that was just a little bit about my trip. So thank you so much if you stuck around and I will see you later with a wax video in the future. All right. Bye-bye.